The easiest way to eliminate mealybugs and aphids on your houseplants? Let's, let's find out. Bad. Bad. I know what you're thinking. Okay, okay, I know. That's not practical, and I don't want to throw away all of my plants either. So we're going to talk about what else I'm going to do to control them. It's really important that I don't panic over this, but it's even more important that I act quickly because they multiply rapidly, and then they're going to spread to my other plants. We don't want that. I've also had to come to terms with the fact that this is not a one and done. It won't be in your case either. I will have to inspect my plants every day for probably a week, maybe two, to, to see if they are multiplying more because you're not gonna get them all in the first try. So all these plants behind me, I have already inspected each and every one of them and I even sprayed most of them just in case because I don't want them spreading to all my plants throughout the whole house. But as you can see on my rack, there are multitudes of plants here that I'm gonna have to check and I will need to check every single solitary one of them. Aphids are easier to get rid of because mealybugs have that white waxy coating on top of them and they tend to hide a little more than the aphids do. So I'm gonna quickly touch on aphids, but the products that I'm gonna use are effective for both of them. Aphids can be green, black, red, yellow, even gray. Oh, oh, and there's even a white one called the woolly aphid that can sometimes be confused for a mealybug. Like mealybugs, aphids are a soft body insect. Usually you will see them congregated on the stem of a plant. But on my Live Forever here, they are scattered all over it. The little whitish spots that you see in the picture are the babies, and those are called nymphs. Here's the Live Forever after I have cleaned it up. I can still see a few aphids on here, but in a day or two, I will know if I got them all or not. I put it in the sink and I sprayed off as much of them as I could first. And then I came back in with my insecticidal soap and I sprayed and I made sure that I got complete coverage on everything. I sprayed the soil, I wiped off the rim of the pot and I made sure I got down inside every single little crevice that I could. Aphids can be killed with just soap and water. The soap will dissolve the outer protective layer on their soft body. That's called the ex exoskeleton. Without that layer, they will dehydrate and then they will die, usually within about two hours. The soap must come in contact with the aphids. There's no residual effect, so you'll have to check every two or three days and respray. If I keep checking on them every day, I will see a drastic decline in, the, in their numbers, and then eventually I will get them all. Yes! Mealybugs are a lot tougher to deal with than the aphids are. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the mealybugs themselves. I'll talk about treatment options, and then I'm gonna tell you about my schedule, how I'm gonna handle them in my house, and then at the end, I'll give you the recipes that I'm using for my sprays. There are many different kinds of mealybugs. The one that's the most prevalent in households or in house plants is the citrus mealybug. When the white wax covering is removed from it, it is a pinkish color. A citrus mealybug leaves her eggs in a cottony-like sack. And remember when I said that this is not a want it done and that, that I needed to act quick? Well, that's because she can lay up to 600 eggs in that white cottony sack. So those eggs hatch in seven to 10 days and can take even up to 45 days if the conditions are right for that. Then it's six to nine weeks before they become adults. So not only do I need to move quick to take care of them, but I'm also looking at a long-term strategy because it's just not gonna happen overnight. Once the mealybugs attach themselves to the plant, they usually don't move around much but I just happened to catch this one today going on vacation somewhere and let's just say it's not going home anytime soon. There are four different ways to control the mealybugs with an alcohol, water and soap, neem oil, a man-made chemical, and predatory 
insects. So soap and water alone won't kill the adults or the eggs. So I'm gonna use a mixture of alcohol, water, and soap. The alcohol is necessary to dissolve the waxy coating on the mealybug. The soap really has two functions here. One, it helps the alcohol adhere to the mealybug. And then it also goes in and it, once, the out, once the wax coating is dissolved, then it helps to break down the exoskeleton of the mealybug, just like it did on the aphids. And then they get dehydrated and then they die. Baby mealybugs are called crawlers, which is also a nymph. And they can be killed with just soap and water. You have to make sure that you get plenty of coverage on them though for that to happen. If you go the alcohol route, make sure that you test your plant first. Different plants react differently to the alcohol and alcohol is very drying. So if you wanna take a look at fuzzy plants, do not like alcohol at all. You see how wilted, this is a um, petunia that I'm trying to overwinter and it is pretty droopy. So I don't expect these leaves to come back. I see a couple that don't look too bad. So I'm kind of hopeful maybe it will. If it doesn't, it's a lesson learned for me, that's for sure. So just make sure you test your plant first. Neem oil is a natural product that works by smothering the mealybugs. And I'll be using it, um, tr I'll try to be using it sparingly because it does have an odor that lingers for a couple of days but it is pretty effective. Chemical treatments. Okay, so there are some sprays out there that you can buy. So you don't, you know, if you don't wanna make your own insecticidal soap, um, they have pyrethrins in them. And, but I, when I was looking at the ingredients on some of these products, the majority of the product is neem oil. So I'm like, just use the neem oil. I found this product in my shed and it has probably been in there for 15 years. I hardly ever use any kind of chemicals in my yard anymore. It's very, very rare. It's a last resort, that's for sure. It's a granule. Put it around the base of the plant, you water it in, and then the plant takes it up. And then when the insect eats that part, then it dies, the, the chemical kills it. So the active ingredient in this chemical is aminocloprid. Aminocloprid is a man-made chemical that mimics nicotine. Um, it has been banned in several countries because of its high toxicity. It's deadly to fish, so you don't want to use it around any kind of water, you know, and you really want to be safe around if you have pets or kids, you know, you really want to be careful about using it in your house. I'm a cloprid. It, like I said, is a, um, a chemical that mimics tobacco. So if you have access to tobacco, you can make your own tobacco tea. Um, it is, um, but I caution you, if you go that route, be extremely careful. Um, it will work, but it's dangerous. Um, it's not safe on your skin, around your kids, or your pets. I won't be giving you a recipe for that today, um, so if you do do that, just please, please, please be very cautious. Predatory insects. You know, people may be a little squeamish about adding more insects to your house, but you know, and that's a personal choice, but they do work. They are the natural enemy of mealybugs, and it's green lace wings, lady beetles, not ladybugs, and um, predatory wasp. Predatory wasps are teeny tiny little things, so it's not like the big wasp that we see, you know, outside that we're afraid we're gonna get stung by. So. You know, my house is 145 years old. I deal with spiders and centipedes and don't bomb my house anymore to get rid of them. So I just kind of just deal with it on a basis when I have to. So to, to get some actual beneficial bugs in the house, it probably wouldn't bother me that much. If I get to the point where I don't have the mealybugs under control, then I will seriously consider getting some beneficial insects. That is the most natural way that we could handle trying to get the mealybugs and the aphids under control. Okay, so my schedule for taking care of these bad boys, they suck so bad. I think I already said that. There's gonna be multiple generations, because remember I said I have to deal with them quick and I have to have a long-term strategy. First initial treatment, I'm gonna spray the plants off with water, and then I'm gonna go in and manually remove them, remove any that are left on there. Then I will do the alcohol, water, and soap spray. 
I will start checking them every day. I will do a visual inspection. I have so many, I may not check every single solitary one of them every day. I may spot check. I'll do that for about a week and then I will come in and spray with neem oil. I will continue to visually check and manually removing any adults that I see. And then I may go two to three days before checking and to give them time to grow or just to show up if they're gonna show up. And then, you know, visually check them, remove any. Then, um, at about 10 days after the neem oil, I'll go back in and I will spray with the alcohol in the soap and water. And I want to kind of rotate that a little bit. One, because the neem oil stinks and I, I don't want to smell it all the time. But two, because I don't want to take a chance of them kind of like getting used to the alcohol or the, or the neem oil. So I want to kind of rotate it a little bit. I will continually keep monitoring them and I will keep that schedule up as long as I feel like it's necessary. If I see a major decrease in them, maybe I can go down to checking them, you know, every 10 days. So with any luck, I can be able to go down to once a month and I expect to have mealybugs all winter. It may only be one or two here and there, but I don't really expect, with as many as I have, I don't expect them to completely go away. Um, if you only have one plant or two plants that are affected, you have a much better chance of getting rid of them than I do. I don't know that I will ever get rid of them completely. Same with the, the aphids, I do expect them to be gone. Um, but same with fungus gnats. I still deal a little bit with fungus gnats. They're not near as bad as I had them last year, but it is a continual battle. And I believe as long as I have plants in the house, as long as I continue to, to bring plants in, whether I buy them or whether you know I bring them in from outside, I will always have an issue and that has to always be addressed. I'm gonna put the recipes up. So if you are still here, I really appreciate you watching this video to the end and I really truly hope that it helps you. If you have any questions at all, let me know down in the comments. I'm more than happy to help answer anything. And if you battle with them, I would love to hear your story about how it's going. I think they're kind of cute, but oh, they're such a pain, you know, but literally they suck. They suck.